The Taliban regime in Afghanistan has banned women from education. The rule of the mullahs in Iran has long mandated girls wear the hijab in public. Other humiliations include not being able to watch a game of football at Tehran's Hughes Azizi Stadium. Polygamy, the taking of multiple wives by a single man, is illegal, common even, across many of the Muslim states. Until 2018, women were not even permitted to drive in Saudi Arabia. They still today require permission from their legal guardian, a male, father or husband, to acquire a license to get behind the wheel. Let us not forget that Islam has many forms and many interpretations, but the subservience of women to men appears at first glance to be a common theme across the Islamic world. Here to discuss this with us is the political commentator, Maya Tusi. Maya, why don't Islamic countries like Iran and Afghanistan want women to be educated? Um, mainly because, um, actually for those who know, uh, Imam Tawidi, who was a, um, an Islamic cleric in Iran, uh, but he was a reformist and he escaped Iran uh, and he now lives in Australia. He actually says uh, that uh, is Muslims can be reformed over time, but Islam can't. That's the difference between Islam and Christianity. The Islamic text is fixed, whereas with Christianity, both Christianity and Christians evolve over time. So that's one difference. Um, every system is about uh, the balance between chaos and order or freedom and order and it's about the degree uh, so when it comes to the islamic countries um, you have certain places like saudi uh, that there is a essentially cultural consent to an extent and and so it's, it's actually the the population haven't had the opportunity uh, to be told uh, something else so they actually essentially politics and the, the political establishment is a mirror held at themselves whereas iran is a slightly different case uh, because the the population and as a culture that's what they call it the islamic occupation uh, they are as people they're not uh, on the same boat uh, so this is about the, the balance between um, islam and muslims in terms of uh, the evolution of it or modernization of it so Someone like me, for example, who is a, is a kind of modern, cultural Christian part of the Greek Orthodox faith. I, I don't do religion, but culturally I love it all. Is that what you're saying? If, if there is reform, it can't be Islam, it can only be Isl Muslims that reform themselves? Yeah, exactly. Um, so whether it's the Islamic text itself or... Uh, right now, the deep toxic culture um, of some of the, the Muslims or Islamists, as we call them, have, um, it's not really just against women or children. And it's, a, it's also against uh, men and just humans in general. They just control them differently uh, and separately. So a sort of system that we have in communist countries or we had in communist states uh, where, for example, in order to and maintain order in society, they will prevent you from getting rich, it will prevent you from in having individual choice. Uh, so that is a similar thing, but obviously on a whole different level. So women, uh, for example, being forced to uh, wear a headscarf or, a, or something, or a, even like a, a niqab, and that's, that's a symbolic thing to ensure that they know that they are under control. Uh, it's the same thing. Again, men also have restrictions on a different level. And so in, 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 they start from early days. Everything is about, it's not really about any morality. It is not so, really about morality. So this is, this is more about governmental control than it is about Islam. Is, this is not the true Islam. Well, the, the, my controversial view is uh, uh, the, the, the whole Islamic ideology was a political ideology anyway. Right now, obviously, there is a faith aspect to it. So a lot of Muslims are just normal Muslims. They just have a faith. That's different. That's just the link between Islam and uh, the rest of the Abrahamic religions. Um, but uh, the, as, as a text, it was clearly a political ideology. It was about control. So it, it, it's not a surprise that uh, Islamic leaders choose the text to run um, establishments, whether you so want to call it government or states. So what can Muslims within this country who don't agree with this kind of dictatorship, what can they do to help themselves? Whether, I mean, Muslims here or uh, back in the Middle East or North Africa, uh, what you kind of need, first things first, there is a, a, a bit of responsibility um, on every individual uh, when it comes to whether it's terrorism or extremism uh, or anything else that dodgy comes out uh, from uh, the Islamists. And, the so-called moderate Muslims, normal people, they need to start speaking out. That way you'll prevent 
a, a, a non-Muslim who criticized um, like Islamic terrorism, for example, from being called an Islamophobe. So if you actually have Muslims coming out to fight back, then that will be a good start. Uh, but again, again, we can't really dictate people how, what to do. Uh, it is not a dictatorship. Um, it's, it's just, it would be, it would be lovely if we had that scenario. Uh, but the other issue is uh, we have enough evidence to show that a lot of the, the normal people uh, in the Islamic world, uh, the, the ones who are still in those countries, they are more uh, liberal and reformists than some of the people who escape those countries, who come to the West. Some of the people who are actually here, they are not integrating. They're not willing to actually embrace freedom. And so that is a bit of a dilemma. So you kind of want to should we replace them with the ones who are still there? <laughs> but we don't know exactly what to do. That's the problem. Maya, it's always wonderful to speak to you. Thank you so much.